Born and brought up in Kodaka country, Pani Nadi wanted to reach her husband Samadra Rajan after her virginity. She hurried across the forest and hills, over rocks and ravines. As she got closer to Samadra Rajan, her heart swelled with excitement that she was going to see the hero. She went a little further and two arms appeared to embrace her lover. She jumped and ran with her arms wide open. But two hands did not seem enough for the abundance of passion that rose within, her arms of desire grew to ten, twenty, a hundred. She approached Samadra Rajan with her arms extended eagerly. What are the decorations made by the Chola nurse mothers for the bride who went to reach her desired husband? Damn! How many beautiful green saris did they wear? How did they burn the colorful flowers? How did they sprinkle the perfumes? Aha! How can one describe the beauty of the Punne trees and Kadamba trees and precious flowers that grew on both banks? Can the reign of the gods match this? The Golden River. Who could be a virgin who would not be delighted to see you? Who can be a bride who doesn't swoon at the sight of your bridal gowns? Isn't it natural that all the virgin girls in the town surround themselves around the bride? Arizalaru is one of the golden rings that the bride stretches out with desire to embrace her husband. On the southern side of Kaveri, there is a beautiful river called Arislaru. The existence of such a river should be known to those coming from a little distance. The lush green trees that have grown densely on both sides hide the river. Arizala can be said to be the royal maiden who first left the village and was born. The beauty of that virgin river has no comparison in this world. Good, let the people forget the thought of Andapuram and come closer to Arizala with us. Let them enter between the trees that grew close to the oasis. Wow, what a great scene! Isn't it like giving beauty to beauty and giving sweetness to elixir? Who are these ladies sitting in the colorful swan-shaped boat? Who is this Narimani who stands out with Gandhi as the central hero among them, like the queen born to rule the seven worlds like the full moon among the stars? Who is Shanta Sundari sitting next to her with a veena in her hand? Who are these Gandharva women who sing music in sweet voices and make the flood of the river mingle with the flood of hymns? One of them is Meenalosani, another is Nilalosani, one lotus face sheet, another one is the lotus petal Nayanathal, a redeemer of the Veena, may her cantha-like fingers gaze at the beauty that roams the strings of the Veena. What is the sweetness of the hymn they sing? Has not even the flood of the river ceased its sound to hear it? Even the parrots and quills living in the riverside trees are deeply enthralled. What is the wonder that those who are born as human beings, the blessed ones who have ears to hear, are ecstatic when they hear that elixir. Haven't we heard these sweet Tamil songs somewhere? Yes, these are the lyrics in Sai Lopathakaram. However, when these girls sing, they gain unprecedented poise and charisma. They look like Pani Nadi's best friends. That's why they sing so ecstatically. Damn! How do songs and sins mix and mingle and flow from their voices like a flood of elixir? Singing, singing, dancing, music. All that is nothing. This is some magical art. A magic trick that will make all the singers and listeners go crazy. The boat floats along and comes to a standstill in the stream where the trees give some space. Two women descend, one of them was a lady of majestic appearance, worthy of the queen of the seven worlds. Another was Nanga who played the strings of the Veena with her fingers. Although both were beautiful, there was a great difference between the beauty of one and the other. One has the majestic beauty of the Centamara flower. Another has the sweet beauty of the Cumuta flower. One full moon, another is the morning crescent. A swinging peacock, another is the singing quilt. One is Indrani, another is Cupid's girlfriend. Ganges is a fast channel, another is the meandering Kaveri. Without leaving the readers in a state of further suspense, we tell them who these two are. The majestic-looking Gunga is Kundave, the wealthy daughter of the Sundara Chola king. Sister of Arulm is Hivarman who is famous as Rajarajan in history. Madarazi who is popularly known as Arsaling Kumari and the youngest Prati. A great Tamil woman who was the founder of the throne of the Chola kingdom. Thirap woman who took Rajendra, the son of Rajaraja 
and raised him to become a hero of Viridi and a king of Manity. Another is a girl from Kajumbalarj Kyratrasar clan who sought the privilege of being with Kundavabh Prati. In later years, she will be blessed beyond compare in history. Today she exudes modesty, sweetness and gentleness. These two brides got down from the boat to the shore. Kuntava looked at the other female friends and said, You stay here. We'll be back in a minute. She said. All those female friends were princesses who were born in the palace of the little princes in Tamil Nadu. Those who had come to the old palace considering Kundave as a friend of goddess Kundave took only one of them and went down to the bank and said I will go and come back soon and disappointment and anger appeared in their eyes. A horse-drawn chariot was standing on the bank. Vanati! Get in the chariot! Kuntave said looking at her friend. When Vanatha got on, she also got on and the chariot went fast. Sister! Where are we going? Can you tell me? Vanathi asked. Why don't you tell me? We're going to the fortune teller's house. Said Kundave. Why are we going to the soothsayer's house, sister? To ask about what? What else? Just to ask about you. Have you been looking delirious and emaciated for a few months now? Just to ask when you're going to get better. Sister. They are very grateful. I am not sick. Don't go asking about me, let's go back. No, mother, no. I'm not going to ask about you, I'm going to ask about myself. What are you going to find out about yourself? What are you going to find out by asking Zasir? I'm going to ask if I'm going to get married or just spend time as a virgin until the end. Sister. I will go and ask the astrologer about this. We should ask their minds, shouldn't we? They should nod their heads. Will not all the kings of the fifty-six nations of the Himalayas up to the first Kumari node come running to compete? Why, they will come from all the countries across the sea. They will give themselves to any brave prince who will take them by the hand. Have you? That's for you to decide. Vanati, even if everything you say is true, there is one obstacle. If I marry the royal son of any country, won't I beg to go to his country? I don't want to go to another country from this Chola country where the Golden River flows. I have taken a vow that I will not go to another country. That will not be a hindrance, any prince who sends them will be a slave at their feet. He must stay here and leave. Aha! Uh -huh. Are you telling us to keep the prince of another country in our town like catching a rat and keeping him in our lap? Do you know what troubles will result? Anyway, people who are born female must end up getting married one day. It is not said in any scripture, Vanati. Look at Avayar. Did she not live long as an immortal poetess? Didn't you become an old woman by God's grace at a young age? Well, if you decide to marry like that, I will marry an orphaned Chola warrior. Such a person will not have a kingdom. He will not take me and ask me to go to another country. He will stay here in the Chola country. Sister. Then you will not leave this Chola country. I will not go for a single day, even if you say that you will make me the Queen of Heaven. My sense of smell is relieved today. What's that? If you go to another country, I must come with you. I cannot be separated from you. At the same time, I do not want to part with this rich Chola country. Marriage but you have to break up. I'm not going to get married, sister. Hey! Where did all the teaching I got go? Am I like them? Adi golly! I know everything. Are you trying to throw dust in my eyes? You have no admiration for the Chola country. The Chola country, which you desire has gone to war with the sword and the sword against the E-land? Do you think I don't know your private parts? Sister! Sister! Am I so mad matey? Where is the sun? Where is the morning dew? What is the use of a dewdrop wishing for the sun's friendship? The snowdrop is small. The sun is big and bright. But does the snowdrop hold such a sun captive within itself, or not? 
Venati said in a voice full of excitement and curiosity, You say so. You say that even a drop of snow can reach the sun. She said. Then all of a sudden mental fatigue came. The dew drop longs, the sun also captures. But what is the result? For a little while it receives the right punishment. It dries up in the sun, and vanishes without knowing where it was. That's wrong, Venati. Seeing the desire of the snowdrop, the sun unites the snowdrop with himself. He thinks that the snowdrop woman of his desire should not catch the eyes of other men. When the night comes, he leaves it again. The hidden snowdrop comes back and rises again, doesn't it? Sister. You are saying all this to please me. Then tell me there's a flaw in your mind. Have you managed to say no no all this time? That's why I'm going to see Gooden Tajosaya. If my mind is lacking, what is the use of going to the seer to ask about it? Venati sighed. The house of the child soothsayer was in a corner of the city in a secluded place near the Kali temple. The chariot went around the city and reached the house without entering the city. Seeing how the charioteer drove the chariot there without a hitch, it seemed that he must have driven the chariot there many times before. The soothsayer and one of his disciples were waiting ready at the door. The astrologer welcomed and entertained the visitors with great devotion. Grandma! O oh mother of daughters and daughters-in-law! You must come! You must come! The blessing of making this poor man's hut, you have once again come in search of this hut! said. Inquisitor. No one else will be here looking for themselves at this time, will they? said Kundave. They will not come, mother. Nowadays, not many people come looking for me. Only when there are many difficulties in the world, people come looking for soothsayers. Now under the rule of their father Sundara Chola, there is no difficulty for the citizens. Everyone is living happily with all the wealth and comforts. Why are they looking for me? said the soothsayer. Then you will say that I have come looking for you because I am in trouble. No, mother. Not at all. What blind person would say that trouble has come to Thirkukumari of the king of Navanadi and Kojakupayare? Since people in the world have no trouble, only this poor soothsayer has trouble, he alone is not cared for. Therefore, you have come as Ambikai to solve this poor man's trouble. Mother! They must come inside the hut. It is unseemly of me to keep them here!" said Josier evenly. Bring the chariot near the temple and park it under the shade of the banyan tree! she said. Then Kunthi and Venati went inside the house to go before the soothsayer guide. The soothsayer looked at his disciple and said, Father! Stand guard at the door! Let no one enter even if he fails to escape. Warn that. The soothsayer's hall was decorated to welcome the princess. A picture of Ambigai was decorated and explained in a loft on the wall. There were two pews ready for sitting. The candle lit, and the golems all around shone. Signs and prints of zodiac signs were scattered around. After both the ladies sat on the pews, the soothsayer also sat down. Mother. Please tell me what happened!" said. Josiah. Shouldn't that also be known in their own astrology? said Kundave. So mother! Saying that, the astrologer closed his eyes and chanted some mantra for some time. Then he opened his eyes and said, Komati, you have come today mainly to ask about the horoscope of this maiden. Is it true that the grace of Goddess Parashakti says so? said. Ah! Magnificent! What do you mean by your power? Yes, astrologer! I came to ask about this girl. A year ago she came to the old palace. For eight months she was very happy. She was the one who was laughing and playing among my friends. Something had happened to her for four months. She often gets tired. She looks like she is delirious, she has forgotten to smile. She says she is not sick. If her parents come tomorrow and ask her, she does not know what to answer. Mother! Is this the wealthy daughter of the Kajumbalar tribes? Is her name Vanathi? said the astrologer. 
Yes, you know everything. I even have the horoscope of this princess. I've put it together. Just be patient. Having said that, the astrologer opened an old box beside him and turned it over for a while. Then, he took a horoscope from it and looked at it carefully.